So what's, what is this piece and why did you write it? So the piece is called How Black Markets Have Adapted to and Shaped the COVID-19 Crisis. It's uh, basically, it's been put up on the Vision of Humanity website. Uh, it's basically a kind of a, a sort of a curated experts blog for economists who are interested in, in peace issues. And it's, um, uh, it's kind of a joint project between the Institute for Economics and Peace in Sydney and Economists for Peace and Security. So different markets are responding to the crisis in really different ways, right? Uh, and that depends on whether the good or the service in question is imported or exported from a given country, a given region, and what the elasticity of supply and demand are. So for instance, um, you know, the US is a large net importer of illegal drugs, right? Everybody knows that. And, and the elasticity is also low. That is, say, as prices rise, quantities may not fall all that greatly. Uh, and that's because of at least two factors, right? Like you've got addiction. Uh, so people just are, are, if they're able to pay, they're, they'll still pay. And then you also have right now, in this moment, you have this rising unemployment rate, um, which the Bureau of Labor Statistics put it, puts it like 13 to 15%, but might be as high as like 25%. You also have this social isolation problem, which you and I are currently experiencing. And so those things kind of combine to produce greater numbers of, you know, things like suicides, but also new demand for, for drugs. And so um, in this way, you know, you could sort of think about drugs as, as what economists would refer to as like an inferior good. So like powdered milk, right? The poorer you are, the more of them you might be willing to buy. So um, for this reason, prices have, have actually gone up and um, incentivized the domestic, domestic production of alternatives. So I do work in protests and we're having a conversation right now about the way that is COVID changing anything about the way people protest in a way that's going to have lasting effects? So not right. are there new things happening at the moment, but are there long-term changes on the horizon? What is your sense across these different sectors of whether or not these are short-term or long-term changes? I, you know, I honestly think most of them are unfortunately short-term, you know, like that huge spike in, in probably domestically manufactured other drugs in the U.S., that's already gone down um, to take you know, the other example of human trafficking, which is also sort of, you know, your shtick. Um, here in the U.S., a large, we're a large net importer. Um, during this crisis, we've seen sort of concomitant drops in both supply due to restrictions on border crossings and also demand due to um, this sort of dramatic unemployment rate that I, I talked about. So both of those have fallen at the same time. Um, so we're not seeing big price rises for trafficked humans, and that all seems to be a good thing. But I'm, you know, I think that that's likely to just uh, you know, as the, as the economy recovers, that's, that's those, that those sorts of trades are also likely to recover. That sounds like it's a, another one of these wicked, wicked, challenging issues where it's going to take people getting together and and pressuring pressuring the powerful. Does that sound right to you? Or is that me reading that's... reading in with my social movement lens? No, no, I think I think you're right. Like this is where I pass the baton to the social movement guy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is vision. This is uh, in vision of humanity. This is an article: How black markets have adapted to and, sh and shaped the COVID nineteen crisis. Thank you, Topher. Appreciate it. Thank you, Austin. All right, I'll see you in a real hallway somewhere. I'm sure. I hope so. All, All right. right, peace. Bye bye.